Chapter 19 of Tilda Jane's Orphans. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Gloria Begeman, Somerville, South Carolina. Tilda Jane's Orphans by Marshall Saunders. Chapter 19 Grandpa's Dream hank's prediction came true but not just in the way he thought it would dodge and grappler as perletta called her two pets dodge being her adaptation of diogenes and grappler a playful allusion to a fighting propensity became in time two fine-looking prosperous shoats and at an exhibition held in kiskaset bore off the prize awarded to young hogs perletta's joy was ludicrous but it was also touching and after one look at her ecstatic face as she stood surveying her two blue ribboned and admired pets in the little country fair hank registered a mental vow not to bereave her of the creatures she loved so dearly they were only pigs but they were her pigs and owing to their upbringing they had developed a most peculiar pig originality they were the worst pigs that ever lived hank declared by feeding one at a time and making the other wait they had become very pugnacious with each other and with perletta and three-sided fights in the back yard were of frequent occurrence now they were of course old enough to feed themselves but for a long time perletta had patiently attended to them one at a time in the little harness room while she presented the bottle to one the other would bite her feet and butt against her knees until hank discovering her one day undergoing this martyrdom got a rope so that she could attach one pig to the wall by the hind leg while feeding the other this made no difference in the pig's feelings toward perletta they bore her a steady grudge though at the same time they had more attachment for her than for any other person they were also jealous of each other and beat and punished each other continually though they were never happy apart perletta who was as strong as a man had herself made a pen in the back yard for them and hank had built a small house but their intelligence and perversity were so great that they were rarely in this enclosure they would work their way out no matter how many obstacles were presented to them and strangely enough reverted to a wild type preferring to make their own beds rather than to sleep in the soft one provided for them their favorite lair was at the back of the garden in a tangle of currant bushes and lilacs and they could be seen frequently running from the barn with their mouths full of straw to replenish this lair they slept late in the morning but about breakfast time would appear at the back door clamoring for the nice warm breakfast perletta always had ready for them after breakfast they crossed the road and went down to the river where they wallowed in the soft mud coming back at noon for another meal and to see whether the dogs had left any bones about the yard for them to nose over though they fought each other constantly they never quarreled with the dogs and even the puppy lost his fear of them and if they presumed to steal one of his bones would snatch it from them occasionally the pigs took it into their heads to make calls and urgent messages would come to perletta from some neighboring house that her pigs were in the yard and would not get out arming herself with a broom she would go in search of them and with mutual snarling snapping and recrimination would guide them toward their home tilda jane was kind and forbearing with the new household pets and would feed them in perletta's absence 
but hank took an amused and constant interest in them so curious did he become with regard to the habits of the genus Seuss that he bought a large natural history and devoted evening after evening to reading aloud from it to any one who would listen to him tilda jane was usually busy with her lessons so it fell to his father to become chief auditor hank soon became an expert with respect to the different types of pigs domesticated and wild large-bodied big-eared english breeds with convex backs small-bodied short-eared chinese breeds with concave backs dwarf pigs river hogs indian wild pigs french short-tusked pigs but most of all he read over and over again accounts of the doings of the long-legged large-headed and thin-bodied greyhound pigs of old ireland one bright spring evening immediately after supper he sat in the dining-room with his natural history in hand while his father listened to him from his armchair opposite just think dad hank was exclaiming what simpletons some folks are to say that any critter has no sense here it tells that pigs are intelligent if you treat em right and that their scent is fine i believe that's so for i've seen our two-track perletta grandpa said nothing and hank went on this book says one man had a pig he trained to stand to game as steady as the best bred pointer do you calculate asked grandpa dryly to let those two hogs rampage all over our garden this coming summer the weather is getting warmer it will soon be time to stir up the ground and we've always had something of a plot this year dad said hank i allowed to buy our vegetables and let the pigs snout up the garden all they like twill do the ground good to rest and the dogs and milkweed will have a chance to stretch their legs what would puppy there do with a garden and he pointed to handy andy who lay stretched out in his red plush chair grandpa hesitated a few instants then he said huskily mr waysmith will soon be taking him away in fact tis his last night with us he wants to send him to boston hank's face fell but he said nothing and stared at the dog by this time the little brindled animal had grown to be a handsome young dog his big head was lighted by a pair of brilliant and eloquent eyes that bespoke a somewhat chastened and disciplined puppy nature he did not perform half the mischievous tricks of a few months ago but he was by no means a model character yet as a large hole in the plaster in grandpa's room testified hank had discovered it an hour before as he went to get a thinner coat for his father and when he mildly remarked upon it grandpa had said testily never mind never mind it's where the dog gets his lime he looks like muffles remarked hank at last but even better looking finer somehow perhaps from his house upbringing of course that's it said grandpa shortly the dog book says that raising pups in large kennels restricts brain development for they lead a routine life this dog has been brought up like a child so he has dad and you ought to be proud of him you and tilda for you've raised him between you though i guess you've had the heft of the work tilda jane has fussed about his food and i've kept him warm nights said grandpa he'll miss us i misdoubt taking him away i don't like it he's too young maybe mr waysmith is going to bring him back again suggested hank i don't know i don't know replied grandpa bitterly that's the way with things in this world change and decay i'm breaking up i feel it don't say that dad replied hank uneasily 
why you haven't been as smart for years as you have been this winter and spring you're just a little down in the mouth on account of the pups going away i down in the mouth repeated grandpa indignantly and on account of a pup get out boy you're taking liberties hank closed his book and got up muttering to himself it's funny but it's mostly the bare solemn truth that hurts in this life half the truth don't offend then he said aloud all right dad all right i feel cranky myself tonight and something seems to tell me that i'm going to die young must be cause sissy's gone out and left us she goes so seldom young girls should stay at home said grandpa in a crabbed voice i don't believe in gadding well i guess i'll go feed the stock said hank stretching out his fat arms and by the way i mustn't forget to give tilda's pigeon some hemp that was a cute trick of little house tops yesterday dad wasn't it grandpa's face softened yes it was i like birds hank went out through the kitchen to the back yard where he shaded his eyes with his hand and looked up toward tilda jane's window yesterday her little dark pet housetop who had got into the habit of flying in and out of her room had brought another pigeon with him to the window-sill the strange pigeon though one of those accustomed to feed about the yard would not enter the house so housetop with many pleading coos and bowing prettily had given his young mistress to understand that he had chosen a little mate and as she would not come in his room he did not know what to do about a nest tilda jane had run downstairs and reported the matter to hank who told her that it would be better to move housetop's box outside the window he had accordingly fastened the capacious cracker box on a shelf near the window ledge and now the two pigeons were flying busily back and forth from the barn carrying straws to add to the already luxurious nest tilda jane had provided for them seems as if they want to do something to help said hank and passing perletta who was vigorously brushing one of the pigs being rewarded by grunts and snaps of disapproval he went to get an evening meal for the birds and hens guess i'll give them buckwheat tonight," he murmured feathered folk like a change in diet as well as humans land how we miss sissy it's wholesome for her to get out once in a coon's age but she leaves a powerful blank women and girls have a lot in their power he went on as he mechanically pursued his way into the barn now it don't seem as if tilda jane was of much account in the world but she makes a home and there are millions of homes to be made and if the home ain't made right nothing goes right women are the home keepers what can the smartest man do toward getting his breakfast if the coffee is cold and the toast burnt and the mush sour he goes out in the world with a load on his stomach and wrath in his heart that wrath's got to be poured on someone and it's all some woman's fault i rate a cook high cooks keep the peace of the world who's going to fight on smooth victuals i believe brotherly love starts in the pantry i'm a better man since i stopped having dyspepsy greasy fodder used to make me hate everyone by spells now i love all men and especially all women yes milkweed i'm a-comin good old girl you'll whinny your lungs out if you don't take care no biddies tilda ain't here you needn't cackle for her i'm going to be your provider for tonight tilda jane in the meantime accompanied by poacher and gippy who had received a special invitation had gone to spend the afternoon and evening and night with the tracys the two good persons who had advised her what to do when she first came to kiskaset and grandpa treated her unkindly 
in hank's absence they had been warm friends and safe counsellors and now at intervals in the little girl's busy life they took her to their own home for as long a time as she would stay of the three members of the household grandpa missed her most though he said least about her absence he's as dull as a beetle hank muttered an hour later as he sat staring at him dad you look tuckered out don't you want to go to bed yes i guess i'll go said the old man getting up you'll mind and put the blower on the stove so the sparks won't fly out yes sir replied hank and he got up to open the door for his father and the pup who was frolicking round him loath to go to bed so early come sir said grandpa sternly none of your nonsense and he pushed handy andy with his crutch yet at the same time his face softened where would his pet be at this time to-morrow night hank sighed as the bedroom door closed on his father if the old man wasn't so smart in his mind i'd say he was in his dotage think of hating dogs till most eighty and then turning a somersault right in the middle of indulging them grandpa could not sleep well he lay awake for hours and at last fell not into a light dozing slumber but into a heavy dream-haunted sleep that did not rest him he thought that he was a boy again hunting wildcats there they went through the woods to the swamp where their prey the rabbits abounded he could see the boys and the dogs running gleefully after them now he and his hound trip had singled out a wildcat it went up a tree but trip went too he was the one dog in the farming community that could climb a tree provided a fence were near by to enable him to spring up among the branches in the meantime poor grandpa in his dream felt his strength giving out he fell on the soft moss and the wild cat pursued by the hound leaped from the tree to his breast he could feel it tearing and scratching at his throat would it kill him or would good dog trip descend from the tree in time to save him he would try to help himself and he put a feeble hand to his throat he could not push the wild cat away with deadly celerity it was nipping and tearing his garments soon it would reach the tender flesh with a supreme effort he roused himself and seized the wild cat by the throat he would kill it and he was just beginning to shake it violently when he awoke and discovered fortunately that the wild cat in his grasp had been changed into the petted pup handy andy end of chapter nineteen grandpa's dream